Let's talk about the health of your business. I'd like to prove to you with a couple statistics that you ought to be measuring the culture of your business. You ought to have a pulse on, and if somebody's looking to buy your business, they're going to look at the health of your business. Here are some statistics from the book First Break All the Rules. Here's another couple statistics. The most recent Gallup study, the biggest study in the world that measures the health of organizations, measures employee engagement. <clears throat> Three in 10 employees strongly agree on the sixth element that has to do with development, that word. Now let me put that in context for you. How many people, by show of hands, have heard this sentence? For the last 30 or 40 years, the number one reason people leave an organization is because of their direct supervisor or manager. How many have heard that statement? It's a true statement. It's been number one for 30 plus years until last month. The number one reason people leave companies today in this economy is lack of training and development and career possibilities. Their boss being a butthead is now number three. Number two now in this economy is pay and benefits. So let me stack those up again. What are you doing for me to develop me in my career now, not three or four years from now? Pay and benefits is number two, and the relationship I have with my manager is number three. Now what's causing that? Well, part of the answer is this young millennial workforce is coming into happening. You've heard me say, those of you who heard me speak before, by the year 2020, half of all your employees are going to be millennials. I have a daughter who's 23. She's one of them. She's been at Toyota for a year and a half, and she's had at least three conversations with me about the next step in her career. And she's 23 years old. So the idea of loyalty, the idea of, I remember when I went to work at Ford Motor Company shortly after getting out of college, my dad thought I'd work there for 30 years and have 2.3 kids and retire from there and live happily ever after. That's not the way young people come to your workplace anymore. The rules have changed and you don't get a vote. And so when you think about is your organization, and if somebody's looking to buy your business or it's the management team or your employees, assuming they have the cash and the wherewithal to be able to pull this off, how is your business set, and what will your business look like in two, three, four years when you look at turnover statistics? Jack and I were talking one day, and he said, you know, John, the whole transaction of buying, selling businesses would be a lot easier if we just didn't have that people part of it. If we could just take the people out of the transaction, it'd be a lot easier. Well, unfortunately, you can't. Today's presentation was just great. It was good to hear Jack and John get an overview of uh, some of the talent management and, and process-based uh, assistance consulting they give to companies really to help drive value and in, in, in our practice we we assist business owners in, in maximizing some of those things and it's it's wonderful to hear some of the tools that they're using um, they brought really a refreshing look in terms of the business cycle timing and they crystallized some of the some of the critical components around where in the business cycle a lot of a lot of business owners are